as a full-time bladesmith, I'm making knives every day in my shop, most of them Damascus knives. But by far, the number one requested pattern is feather Damascus. And today we're gonna make a feather Damascus knife. So let's go down to the anvil and I'll show you where we start. So I'm gonna be taking two pieces of steel, 15 in 20 and 1084. I'll be cutting them up into five inch pieces. This will give me a total of 20 pieces and I'm gonna stack them alternating. 15 in 20, 1084, 15 in 20, 1084, all the way till I get my stack. Then I'll forge weld those together, draw it out, and we'll start making what's called C's. And I'll show you that process when we get to it. But to save a little time, I've already made my stack. I have fused the ends with a TIG torch. No filler metal added, just fused it in, welded a handle, and I put two sacrificial plates one on each side of the exposed layers that are running like this. I do this to keep oxygen out. I don't have to use any flux. And once I make the initial forge weld, I will grind and take this plate off of each side, then draw it out. So let's get to it. All right, so I thought I'd take a second to stop and show you where we're at with our pattern before we proceed to the next step. So I've drawn the billet out and cut it up into four pieces. So what you're seeing here is the pattern, the C's that we made. So we drew our billet out that was just flat layers stacked up. Then we took our squaring dies and pressed down on the side to, to bend and cause these corners to bend in. Then we took our billet and turned it to where the layers were vertical and squeezed down like this and pushed them to get our pattern. So now I've cut it up and we're gonna stack it and then we'll have our W's. So each one of these pieces I cut is numbered. So this is number one. Number two will look like this because we cut it and now I'm just flipping it up so we can kind of match our patterns. Then number three is flipped this way. And then number four is like this. Now all I'm gonna do is forge weld this stack together, draw it out and cut it up probably two more times, do the same thing two more times. Then we'll get to the part where we'll split the billet I'll stop and show you where we're at when we get to that point. So right now, I'm gonna fuse these ends. Of course, I'm gonna clean it up, and then we're gonna go back and reforge weld it. But you wanna make sure each one of these pieces are flat. You don't want any gaps in between these pieces. It will not forge weld very well if you don't. So try to get them as flat as possible, clean them up good, and ready to go. So let's get to it.
Okay, let's stop for a minute and talk about where we're at. I've got this bar drawn out. It's 320 layers of W's. I've got it drawn out an inch and a half wide by a half inch thick. And I've marked it off an inch and an eighth with eight pieces. And I've numbered them one through eight. That's going to be important when we go to flip them to match the end pattern. So we've got 320 layers of W's. What we're going to do is stack these up on top of one another and come in and split it this way. And when we split it, it's going to drag these W's down right through the center. And that'll give us that pretty look on the edges of our feather pattern. So right now we're going to go cut these, stack them. I'm going to fuse weld them with the TIG torch on the sides. Then we're going to forge weld it. Then we'll do our split. After that, we've got to weld it back together and draw it out with the pattern showing on the side of the billet. Show you when we get there.
So we got our final billet drawn out and we're ready to start making a blade. But I can't stress enough how you must take your time, keep it at about welding heat through most of drawing this bar out, finessing it the whole way. You gotta remember there's a lot of welds here from beginning to end, vertical and horizontal. Now you've done this stack. Now you're gonna stretch it out where you made those butt welds. And if you forge it too cold, you're gonna tear them out and you'll get tear out on the sides. That's why I try to keep it hot, hot, and then I'll bump those corners, but you still get some tear out, and I'll show you some in the final shot here. But those will grind out, they're very shallow, and be able to forge a couple blades out of this. But we're gonna have to do that on the next episode. We're out of time. So I hope you're getting something out of this. We're gonna see you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.